Hermann Philip Detzner was born on the 18th of October, 1882, in the 11-year-old German Empire. He would in his lifetime map various parts of the world, claim to have discovered new human species, survived in enemy territory through an entire world war, returned home as a hero of war and science, and later in Nazi intelligence. But while his life was successful, he endeavored to be extraordinary, which might give merit to the phrase, be careful what you wish for. Detzner was the son of a dentist in Speyhout, Germany. The family included a mum, dad, and, including Hermann, nine children. His father was a dental celebrity at the time, pioneering ways to make false teeth. Seeing his father's limelight and Herman's need to compete with so many siblings led to him having a reputation of always wanting to be precise and determined no matter the obstacles. Herman was trained in the German army in 1902 as an engineer and surveyor, or in German, Pioneer. He would serve for a time in the regular military before volunteering for the Schutztruppe, Germany's colonial security force. In 1908, Hermann was sent to be part of an expedition to the Cameroon region of Africa to help redefine the German colony's border, sticking to the coast and other waterway features. Later in 1912, he would lead a second expedition with the British, but instead went deeper into the interior to redefine the colony's boundaries. He published his findings to a scholarly geographical publication. His findings impressed the German colonial office that in 1913 they asked him to head up a similar expedition to redefine the borders of German Kaiser Wilhelmsland, what is today northeastern New Guinea. He accepted and arrived at Rabul in the Bismarck Archipelago on January 1914. In February, he crossed from the archipelago and led his expedition into the interior of Papua New Guinea. From his arrival until the fall of 1914, he was cut off from the outside world. His expedition included himself, Feld Weibel, Konrad, and 25 native police, two servants, a European interpreter, and 45 native carriers. Both today and in 1914, the interior of Papua New Guinea is a jungle mountain terrain lacking accessibility and infrastructure. His findings wouldn't be published until 1919 to much fanfare. Without he and his party knowing, a state of war erupted between Britain and Germany in August of 1914. As millions of men mobilized to the front and millions more stopped their daily life, Hermann was surveying the remote border region with his expedition. As September neared its conclusion, Australian forces landed in the Bismarck Archipelago across the Bismarck Sea and captured the German colonial leadership and the German settlement at Madang a few days later. Efforts to capture Herman's expedition by the Australian forces was minimal. As October rolled into November, a fortuitous day, the 11th of November, 1914, some of the bearers in the expedition went back to camp to rest as the group went about surveying. Greeting them was an Australian party headed up by a white Australian officer, Frederick Chisholm, he tells the bearers to tell Hermann to meet him a few days south at Nipa and surrender their arms as the German colony has already fallen. Upon hearing this, Hermann instead marches his expedition north to just west of Ley. There he stayed for a time in the Markham Valley, but conflict with the natives and mosquitoes led to a series of reversals. Conrad and several of the others in the party were constantly sick while hiding in this region. Conflict with the local natives led to the Australians sending a party to investigate. Herman and a part of his expedition were able to escape by leaving behind the sick for the Australians to intern. Having invaded capture for a second time, he and the rest of his expedition made rafts to float north, and then make their way to the German missionaries in Sattelberg. The Sattelberg area was proliferated with German missionaries running various Christian missions to the locals under Johann Flierow. Many of the German missionaries had proselytized in Australia or were trained and supported by Christians in Australia and the United States. When the colony had fallen to Australia, they had been made to sign oaths of neutrality, an oath many of them took serious. When Herman and the remainder of his expedition would arrive, they were shown basic Christian charity, food, and a place to rest for the night. 
This is when Herman's famous marches began. Traveling from mission to mission, Herman and his men would fly the Imperial German flag and sing Imperial German army songs. This wasn't without cause of unrest in the area. Johann Flieher's son was caught trying to supply canoes to Detzner's party and arrested by the Australian authorities. One of the missionary directors, Christian Kaiser, had Detzner's party hide in the local village on the slopes of Seriwagen. Later that year, his party attempted to escape via a canoe into Dutch New Guinea. But as they neared the mouth of the river, a converted German yacht, HMAS Una, lay blocking the route. As his bearers resupplied for the journey back, they were able to discover that the garrison had orders to shoot Herman and his men on sight if found. Returning to the village on the slopes of Sarawagad and gathering further supplies, the expedition waited until 1917 to make their next attempt, an attempt that was short-lived. Moving into the Fenister range of mountains, Herman himself became ill and the party had to go back to the village. The source claims on the 11th of November 1918, a worker at the Settelberg mission informed Herman that the war was over, which is weird on two accounts. Australia had prematurely celebrated the end of the armistice on the 8th of November, and then officially on the 13th of November. Either way, Herman wrote to the Australian commander at Morobi, and finally, Herman and the remains of his expedition only came down in full uniforms and flag on the 5th of January, 1919, making him probably the last German to surrender in World War I. He was interned by the Australian authorities and then held for some time in a POW camp in Australia. Upon his release, he was returned to Germany to much fanfare. He quickly published his own scientific paper and was awarded the rank of major. He received various awards from scientific communities and degrees from universities. In speeches, he went at length of living only in the bush and avoiding the always pursuant allied troops nearly capturing him on a nearly daily basis. By 1923, he had written two books, one of his time in Papua New Guinea and a shorter one of his time in West Africa. His Papua New Guinea book was translated into various languages and popular with both German and British audiences. The problem with his Papua New Guinea book was the constant battles with the Australians simply didn't occur and was disproven by an Australian newspaper. The story of him rescuing Papuans from Australian enslavement were rejected publicly by the missionaries that had hid his unit during the war. His supposed discovery of new plants and animals was plagiarized from a fellow German, and his stories of advanced new races of humans akin to Germans wasn't scientifically disproven till a 2006 paper. Herman would claim that the Australians or jungle had damaged or lost his original research as a means to avoid awkward discrepancies and conversations. He would in 1932 admit his book was a fictional account and then he withdrew from public outings. This was a short-lived retirement. In 1935, in 1935, he was recruited by the Abwehr or German intelligence branch. Reviewing intelligence, he would write briefs a role he continued in the OKH until 1945. He was given the rank of colonel and assigned to defend Berlin to the death for the upcoming Battle of Berlin, but instead he was able to use his rank and convince people he was on a mission to help the war effort with intelligence of West Africa and escaped to Heidelberg under American occupation. From there he lived in West Germany until 1970, working as a publisher. While Hermann was successful, his need to be extraordinary led to him being untruthful.